I'm going to start by explaining to you about angular speed. But in order to know angular speed, I think it's important to look at the contrast, which is linear speed. Uh, and with a lot of students, I think with angular speed especially, it seems a little bit wacky. So it reminds me a little bit of like, you know, have you ever seen the movie The Matrix? It's an older movie about Neo. He's like, how does this even work? You know, he sort of, he tried to, he had to bend the spoon with his mind. It's related to reality. So let's see if we can do this. In order to understand angular speed, I think it's important to understand linear speed. Now, you know how linear speed works, I hope. Uh, we could normally say that speed, we could say uh, maybe a linear speed like this. Isn't it just distance over time? Isn't that normally what it is? So think about this now. What if you're going around in a circle? So you're traveling around in a circle, a radius r, and we're talking about linear speed, so like at this key point here, or maybe it's, you know, here, maybe it could be that point right there. Whoops, it'll be exactly left, not this way. I drew it really poorly, actually. There we go. Should be exactly to the left. Or it could be here. I mean, I hope you get the idea here, right? So this is linear speed could be whatever. So this actual value, you have to think about a speed. A speed is a distance over time, true. How do you do this distance if you go all the way around a circle? Do you remember that? To find the distance all the way around a circle, it's called the circumference. And do you remember how it goes? It's 2 pi r. That's the circumference of a circle. And so, I hope it's okay with you, then we're going to define the linear speed as this. The linear speed is going to be um, the distance traveled, which is 2 pi r, that's the distance to go around one whole circle, divided by the time it takes to go around a whole circle, which we call t. This is normal what we do. So we would say this right here, this is your linear speed, linear speed, and we'll define that in meters per second. And we're going to say this here is your radius of the circle, that's r, which is measured in meters. And t is going to be the period. That's going to be the time it takes to go all the way around one circle. So we'll call that uh, the period t in seconds. So this is how we can deal with it. It's the linear speed. Now in a similar way, let's do the angular speed now. This time you're again going around in a circle of radius r. This time we're going to define the angle is going to be the important thing. So this distance is going to kind of be like this. So imagine this, and usually with this we would make it a circle of radius r uh, equals 1. So that's just why it becomes, if you look, it looks an awful lot like 2 pi r over t, doesn't it? Except what if you made your radius 1? What if you made a unit circle? Do you see that it looks like it's just 2 pi r over t, where r is just 1? So this is why you can get this one here. So this is going to be a weird thing because we're going to define this thing. It looks like a W, but it's not. It's actually omega. Omega is the angular speed. So I'm going to write it down in units now. This angle is not going to be in degrees. It's going to be in radians. You might have seen that in math class. Maybe not, but it's in radians. So it's going to be a speed. So that means it's got to be radians per second. So that's actually, we're going to say rad. We often say radians times, you know, seconds to the minus one, because that's how we say radians per second. T is the period, that's the time it takes to go all the way around, so we just have that, that's in seconds. And we're going to define a frequency. I'm going to show you that. That's in hertz, or you could say it's in uh, one over seconds. So how does this relate? First of all, this equation doesn't really show up in chapter, uh, in this topic, but it does show up in a different topic, so that's just why I've put it there. Um, so this is the omega here. This is the angular speed. And again, it's in radians per second. Now you might want to know how to convert that to frequencies. So do you remember we have an equation for, um, I'll put it like this here. So do you remember we have an equation, maybe I'll do it like so there we go, for frequency. Frequency is one over the period. So watch very carefully. If I had omega, which is two pi and over t, are you okay with me just writing it like this, 2 pi times 1 over t? That's the same thing as this. The reason I'm doing that is because that will be more apparent. 1 over t can be replaced with f. So see I can say frequency is 2 pi f? So this might be useful for you as well. So in case you need it, you're not given this on the exams, but I think you could still use it. All right? So it's either 2 pi over t or it's 2 pi f. So this is how we define the angular speed. Sounds complicated, but it's not actually nearly as bad as you think. 
Uh, then finally, we have a relation between the linear and the angular speeds. Okay, so we can define this linear speed, which remember the linear speed is in meters per second. Angular speed is in radians per second. And we have the radius, which is obviously in meters. So we can actually relate the two. And this is in your data book. That's why I'm putting green with a big square around it. This is given. So this is how you can compare between linear speed and angular speed. It all depends on the radius. So that's how you can do it. And surprisingly, that's all you need to do. It's actually not so hard at all. I hope you'll see that at least that it's it's not nearly as bad as you might think. This stuff may look really weird, but I promise you it's okay. You can actually do this. So this will be this will be doable. We can use these in other videos right here, but really you don't need actually that much with these. You just need to know these definitions. And they can ask you something really, really simple, like um, I don't know, this thing goes around, uh, what is its uh, angular speed if they give you the frequency. That's the only way to be a little bit sneakier.